guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, it's so good to be here tonight. I want to pray and just get our hearts ready. I know that we've been on this Better Together series, which, by the way, you don't want to miss Sunday. It's going to be super fun. Uh, Pastor Rusty from Real Life and myself, we're both going to be tag teaming. And like I said, it is going to be interesting because, you know what, I love the fact that we can embrace um, diversity. We can embrace uh, different giftings and, and, and talents. And uh, I know that you're going to be tremendously blessed. He and I, we already sat down and we just talked and, you know, we had some breakfast together and just went over just what, what's on our heart, what we want to share as, uh, as we talk about being better together, but even as a community within the same city as, as uh, lead pastors and, uh, and as, uh, as husbands, as fathers, and as leaders in the, in the local community. So you don't want to miss uh, this coming uh, Sunday. And tonight, I'm going to kind of just get off better together for just a minute. And I, I want to bring a message that hopefully will inspire you, motivate you, convict you, condemn you. No, I'm just kidding. We don't not condemn you at all. No, I'm just playing. Convict you and to stir your heart to change and to think different. Are you guys ready for that? Close your eyes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this night. And we're praying that, Lord, tonight we give you permission to convict our life. We give you permission to interrupt our life. We give you permission to speak into our life. And, Father, I pray that tonight that you would help us to embrace what we don't understand. And I know there are so many people here that may not understand the season they're in. They may not understand why they're experiencing the pain they're going through. Or they may not understand why things have not come to fruition. Maybe dreams, visions, promises, things that they've been believing you for. I ask that tonight that you would give us the strength and that you would give us the Holy Ghost power to not only overcome whatever we're facing, but to also press forward, Father. Help us tonight to push forward with the wonderful gift that you have blessed us with called faith. I thank you that we're faithing up. Say it, I'm faithing up tonight. Come on, say it, I'm ready to faith up. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, um, I believe, hopefully, <laughs> that everybody in this room wants an upgrade in their life. How many want an upgrade in your life? You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you don't like, I mean, if you're, if you're on coach and the airline company says, hey, um, we have five upgrades to first class in the next five minutes the first person who comes to this station you're hooked up how many would run to that thing I, man I would walk and run over people to get that upgrade right and so let, well, let me show you hit it let, let. oh yeah that, that's what God wants God wants to upgrade you he does he does. Say it with me, I, I want an upgrade. I want an upgrade. And, and you know what the truth is, is that many of us, maybe not intentionally, but maybe unintentionally, you've maybe thought about certain things like if, if you're someone that works in, in corporate or you're someone that is enjoying your career, hopefully you want an upgrade in that area. You know, I'm sure that many of you want an upgrade in your single status. Let me tell my single people, just wave your hands in the air because you know you care. <laughs> right? You're like, man, I've been single for like 100 years, you know. And you want to upgrade that single status. I know that there are people that want to upgrade your finances. You want to upgrade your marriage. You want to upgrade your family life. You know, you want to upgrade your, just yourself, it, maybe in your leadership. You know, maybe you want to upgrade your calling. Maybe you've known you've been called to do something specific, but you've been so comfortable just sitting with the knowledge of that calling, but there hasn't been any upgrade to that calling. It's just been information for a bazillion years, and you're just like, okay, I, I, have, to, I have to at some point come to the conclusion that there's a process to this upgrade that God wants me to have. 
Because I know that for a fact, God doesn't want you to stay comfortable. God doesn't want you to stay stagnant. God doesn't want you to be complacent. You know what? God wants to promote people. I think about little Bella here. You know, here you have this teenager up here singing her little heart out. But let me tell you something. She didn't start off like that, trust me, because I know I was in here when she first came on our worship team. And I would tell her as much as the other worship team leaders, like, hey, you know, what? we push her. You know, like, hey, you got to come out of your little shell. You know what I'm saying? But, but how many know that she was willing to go through the painful process of upgrade? And, and the reality is that many of us, we, we want to upgrade, but we don't want to go through the process of upgrade. I want you to, if you're a note taker, write this down. If you're not, don't worry about it. Just hear me. I wrote this down. I'm going to say it two times because I want you to get this tonight, okay? So God wants to bring you a progressive. Everybody say progressive. Okay, so God wants to bring you a progressive revelation of what he wants to do in your life but also what he wants to do with your life. But that is going to need a progressive revelation that only comes from God. And I pray that tonight as you're listening to me and as you're hearing this message, that you wouldn't just sit there and not have an attitude of, God, upgrade my spiritual ears to hear. Because some of us, we, we, we read the word, but there is no more upgrade. Because we're so comfortable with the information or the revelation that we got 10 years ago when God wants to upgrade that revelation in 2018 for your life. God wants to do that for you. But we have to ask ourselves too, well, I wonder if I even want to upgrade what, what I'm hearing tonight. You know what? Pray that tonight. God, upgrade my spiritual ears. Upgrade my eyes to see what you want to show me. Upgrade my life. Upgrade my spirit in, in how I'm going to receive tonight. Because you know what, it's, it's easy to hear, but it's not always easy to receive what we want to hear or what we need to hear. And so we have to ask God to upgrade that part of our life. And uh, as I was just preparing for this message, I thought, what can I do that would really be relatable? Well, I'm from the 80s, so I'm an 80s kid. And um, I remember when Nintendo first came out, it was most amazing. Because I was, I was the Atari generation, you know what I'm saying? How many were the Atari generation? Do you remember the little car racing thing with the wheel? The br I loved all that. But when we got Nintendo, it was like, oh, my God. It's the most amazing thing. But my favorite game, I had two favorite games. It was Contra and Mario Brothers, right? Woo! That was that was, the, the, that was your cue right there. <laughs> and so right there, look at that. So I, I brought it just to bring some revelation tonight, please. And, and you know what? Uh, I'll start with Contra. You know, one of the things about Contra was you only got four lives in Contra. And it sucked because when you're first starting out the game, you're, you're, trying, to, you're trying to figure out how to, how to win the different levels. Because when I played, I would play for at least five, six hours. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and I wouldn't even, I'd even forget to eat. You know what I'm saying? Because you're just so like, oh, my God, I'm going to... But, but as I kept losing, I kept getting frustrated. And so guess what? As, as I kept progressing in, 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 in learning games and talking to people, they said, hey, why are you getting so comfortable with four lives? Why don't you go ahead and skip that process? And you know what? Do what we discovered. And that was you grab your little game control, and there was a code that you would do. Up, up, down, down, left, right. Left, right, select, start, and then bam, you'd get 100 guys. You'd be like, forget four guys. I, that, means, that means I got 99 more times to jack this game up. You know what I'm mean? saying? So, so if I died the first man, I'm like, so what? Third guy, fifth guy, 20th guy. I'm like, who gives a rip? But when you think about your personal life, you don't have 99 lives. But it's amazing how we treat our life like that. And we want to skip the levels that we must go through. For example, Mario Brothers. Oh, Mario Brothers. Same thing. You know what? I started discovering uh, some really cool stuff. You know what? In Mario Brothers, you can skip worlds. Because, you know, you go from world one to world two 
to the world. And like, uh. But then you would find out these very creative uh, ways of, of, of skipping levels, skipping worlds. And, and what was funny, but and it was kind of goofy too, but it's almost like the game, like they did this on purpose, per, on purpose to tick you off. But like I would get to the point where like I'm already, I'm, I'm like finished. But then it says, oops, sorry, you forgot to get. And you have to go back to a different world to get something that you skipped. And it would be like, you got to be kidding me. Like, why the heck did you, did you offer, you know what I'm saying, this skipping of a level only to allow myself to get to the place where I want my dream, I want my vision, I want my purpose, and it literally gave me a rude awakening of, sorry, you must go back. But isn't it interesting how so many of us, you know what, we go through life, right? For example, let's say at age 32, and I know you're all like 21, but I'm just going to throw that number out. At age 32, you know, there are some things that, that you had to go through, right? And let's say you're now 42 young. But, but there were things that, that were very challenging that you just said, you know what, forget that. I'm just not going to deal with this. I'm just going to go ahead and just pass this. And you know what, it'll just fix itself. It's going to work out. It's going to be fine. And I think a lot of Christians, okay, I think a lot of believers, and, and I can say that I think even as leaders, we can be responsible for some of that as pastors. Because I know that there's faith, right? We want a faith forward. We want to trust God. But I think that we forget that there's also a process to God. And we want to skip the process because the process hurts. The process makes you feel uncomfortable. The process makes you feel like, like God is silent. The process makes you feel like God forgot you. The process will make you feel like some of you right now, let's just take you single people. Right now you're single. You've been single for a long time. But you keep trying to skip the process of God trying to build the character that it needs in order for you to be able to sustain the man or the woman that he's trying to bring you. And hopefully they're godly. Amen. Amen. And maybe right now you don't have the character to sustain that man. You may not even have the character later to sustain the call that's on that man. Because there's some things that God's still trying to work out in you. Man, you can't get that godly woman yet because you don't have the character to even keep her. All right, we'll leave that right there. That's a whole other sermon. We'll leave that. But you know what I'm saying. I'm just trying to say that, or, or, or listen, or, or maybe you're someone that, that God gave you a dream to open a business. And, and you know what? The process of having to, to, to deal with the difficult stuff of renewing your mind, of surrounding yourself with the right they, of connecting with people that know actually what they're doing. But because we don't like the process of, 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 of vulnerability and being honest and being raw and real and saying, you know what? I suck as a business owner or businesswoman. Can you please help me? Can you please teach me how to be successful like you? I think pride and ego can get so in the way that you can literally miss the blessing that God's trying to bring you. And then you wonder, why am I now 42 years old and I'm not seeing the dream, the vision, the, 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 the passion that I had? It's because we keep skipping. You're skipping levels. And let me tell you something, at every level, there is a devil. But every devil has been overcome by Jesus. Amen? I get that water. Thanks. Thank you. Are you guys here tonight? Here we say process. <clears throat> so you got to go through the process. God wants us to go through the process. And when you don't go through the process, you end up being frustrated because then you get so far because you took shortcuts. You skip something. Let me give you a few examples. Let's just take people from the Bible. People that, that God entrusted vision with. People that God entrusted mission with. People that God entrusted with some pretty big stuff. But I want you to think about this. What if Jesus decided to skip the process of the cross? What if David never learned to honor Saul even when Saul was trying to kill David? You see, that's a process. 
I think so many times we can hit a place where we're in disagreement with someone or we don't like what they're telling us. But there's a process of honor that God has to take you through because there's character that he needs to build in you for the very thing that he's trying to give you. And so David had to learn humility through the process of someone treating him like crap. But who likes to be treated like crap? Anyone like to be treated like crap? Nobody likes that. But I really believe that God will place people in your life that are, are meant to refine you. And define you. Because <laughs> let me tell you something. You don't get refining without defining. <laughs> you really begin to find out what kind of person you are. How about this person? How about um, Gideon? If Gideon would never have allowed God to dwindle his 30,000 plus soldiers down to 300, Gideon would have never been the mighty man of valor. How about... Joshua, if Joshua never marched seven days around Jericho, the walls would have never came down. See, because it's stupid to say, okay, walk around seven times. Well, that's stupid, God. Seven times walk around the city of Jericho. That is, that's so, and so many of us, God has already given you. He's already giving you some strategy. He's already giving you the what you must do next. But I think so many times we're, we're hearing, but we're in denial of what we're hearing. And then we think, well, that's stupid. Well, how's that going to work? And, and, and so when, when God, just remember this, when God brings a worth, it will never make natural sense. If you heard from God and it made sense to you, that was you. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because when God speaks something to you, it will always conflict with what your belief system is because God is greater than me. God is greater than I. And so we have to understand that when God speaks to us, it's never going to connect. I mean, who wants to forgive people that betrayed you? I don't. But God says, Mauricio, if you don't forgive, I can't move forward with you. <laughs> but you saw what they did. Yeah, and remember you, <laughs> right? And, and so that's a process, a process of forgiveness, a process of letting go. I, I, recently, somebody put on Facebook, you know what? What's the secret sauce to, to something, life or something like that? And I put forgiveness. And everybody put a lot of things, you know, which are all good stuff. But you know what? Forgiveness is something that's so touchy. Because it deals with you coming to a place of humility and dying to yourself. And when you can't forgive, the reality is that the only person who gets hurt in that process is you. While the other person, man, they're living their life. But you're, you're, you're a sourpuss. You're, you're angry. You're upset. And, and then you're wondering, Why? I think some of us tonight are probably here, and maybe you got hurt somewhere over here. And now you put whatever age number you want, but you, you got hurt somewhere here. Maybe it was 8 years old. Maybe it was 10 years old. Maybe it was 15. But you wanted to skip the process of having to address it. And then now you find yourself at 42, 52, 62, and you're bitter about it. And you're wondering, why am I not progressing? Let me tell you why. Because at some point, you have to get your God revelation. So that God can give you the progression he's trying to give you. And I know it sucks because some of us, we're at that age where we're just like, you've got to be kidding me. I've come this far and now I have to go back and deal with that? Yes, you do. But why? Because that is a part of the process to your progress. You're like, dang, why did I come on Wednesday night? Why couldn't your wife just come and preach? <laughs> God will privately prepare you before he puts you publicly in promotion. God will never promote you until he privately prepares you. It starts with you 
and him. Every single man I just mentioned in this Bible had to start privately. I mean, think about it. David, if he didn't have a bear and a lion, he would have never been prepared for Goliath. Because remember this, when he saw Goliath, he didn't show up in his own strength. He showed up with the testimony of what God prepared him for. He said, hey, listen, <laughs> Mr. Goliath, oh, my God, <laughs> he gave me the strength to kill the bear and the lion. And as I took them down, you're going down. You see, if you have nothing that prepared you for the next season, the next level, the upgrade, if you have nothing to say for it, you're going to find yourself, uh, well, uh, uh, I think I can, instead of saying, you know what, no, the God who delivered me yesterday is the God who will deliver me today. And the God who's delivered me today is the God who's going to deliver me tomorrow. There has to be a testimony, right? Isn't there a scripture somewhere in the Bible about overcoming by the blood of the land and by the word of my, let me say, by the word of my what? Testimony. How are you going to overcome the next level? Word of my? So when you find yourself back in that same place again and again and again, you can say to yourself, I remember this. You see, I've already been here before. I've been in this oppression. I've been in this place of confusion. I've been in this place of chaos. I've been in this place of not knowing, you know, with all my information. But there was a God who loved me enough, who took me out from that place once before. And it's the same God who's going to get me out of this place even now. And that, that's the testimony that will help you overcome the next season in your life. You see, there has to be a history with God in you. There has to be something that you've experienced that gives God all the glory. The glory is never for you. When you hit that other place again, that's where you start bringing the glory back to God because you said, oh, I remember this. I remember when I felt this way. I remember when I felt angry, bitter, resentful. I remember and God delivered me. And so, man, I'm just going to go ahead and trust the same God who delivered me at 32 is going to deliver me at 42. Amen? And are you getting this tonight? I'm not trying to wow you, I promise you. I want to I upgrade us tonight. Every single one of us. And if you're watching on live stream, God wants to upgrade your life as well. Say process. process. Yeah, God wants to give you a process to prepare you. Amen. I love this. Okay, let's go to scripture. You guys ready for some scripture? Okay, so, so God wants to develop some character in order for us to have uh, uh, some, some endurance and faith. Look, 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 look at this. In Philippians 1.6. It says, I'm convinced and confident. Everybody say, I'm convinced. You see, and that's where God wants us. He wants us to come to the place where you're finally convinced. Not always questioning God. But where you're finally convinced and where you're finally confident in this. Look at this. I am convinced and confident of this very thing. What very thing? The very thing I'm in right now. That he who has, that who, who has what? Begun. So, so just put, put yourself in contra. Put yourself as Mario Brothers right now. He who has begun a good work. Notice he didn't say he who has begun a dysfunctional work. No. You see, even in your dysfunction, God is good. Yeah. Even in your setback, God is, it's good work. You see, the, the problem is that we find ourselves so many times in, in the three Ds, delays, uh, uh, disappointments, and, and disillusion. And, and he says here, but, but I who has begun a good work in you will, everybody say, continue. continue. And isn't it interesting that at the end of a game when you died with your four guys, it says continue or end. Well, guess what? There is no end for God. There's only a continue button. He's going to continue the work, the good work that he's begun in you. And I love this. And it goes on, and he says, and then I'll perfect you, and I will complete it until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time of his return. So when you're losing in the video game world, there's no option for God to quit on you. He, does, he hits continue. Come on. God wants to continue the work. Maybe you delayed it. Maybe it was your fault. 
Maybe you, you, you didn't go through that process. But guess what? God can go back with you and begin to address those situations, those circumstances, that, that stuff you didn't want. God, God wants to go through it with you. That's why it's he who has begun the good work that he will complete it with you. He will, he will continue the good work. So aren't you glad that no matter maybe how delayed I've been or, or how disappointed I've been, that, that God says, but, but I can still do a good work with you and, and we can complete this together? And, and that brings me joy because then when, when, I, have, when I have missed God with, with poor decisions, when I've missed God with my own attitude, when I've missed God because I didn't have the faith to believe him for it, that God can... Be so merciful and so graceful to do a continue. I love that. And I know today in the church, we find a, a church, a bride of Christ that is so broken and so hurting. And there's so many people that are just at a place in their, in their life where they're just like, you got to be kidding me. All this life. And there's regret. There's regret. But there's no regret in Christ. There's redemption in Christ. God wants to redeem. Now, now you may not get all those years back, all those years back, but let me tell you what he will do. But he'll redeem you. He'll redeem your family. He'll redeem your children for your sake. And it's just getting a hold of that, grasping that. Look at Mark chapter 10, verse 35 through 40. I love this. It says, James and John, look at this. This is hilarious, these guys. James and John, they came to Jesus. Now, just picture this. And they were the sons of Zebedee. They said, teacher, good teacher, uh, we'd like to ask you for a little favor. Can I get just a little favor from you, Jesus? And they said, he says, uh, well, what do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. They said, hey, uh, let one of us sit at your right hand <laughs> in your glorious kingdom. That, doesn't that just sound like us entitled people sometimes? Like we feel like, like the church owes us something or, or our, our job owes us something. It's so in, this entitlement, like, like people owe us. Millennials. We won't go there. Okay, but <laughs> just this world owes you everything. Praise God, right? No, nobody owes you nothing. Uh, they replied, let one of us sit at your right hand in your glorious kingdom, and then let the other one sit at your left hand. Okay, so watch this. Jesus says, dude, you don't even know what you're asking for. <laughs> like, <laughs> you want an upgrade? <laughs> okay, all right. Now, be careful what you ask for. It's kind of like when you pray for patience and all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Lord, give me, Lord. Just, just give me patience, Father, for just, Lord, help me to love people. And all the haters are going to come out. Because that's how, that's how God refines. I mean, think about it. How can you exercise love until you've been hated and persecuted? I mean, Jesus said, what good does it do, do you to, 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 to love or, or, or to, to even be loved by those who already love you? There's no profit in that. But love those who don't love you. He's like, I, I don't think you understand what you're asking for. Uh, let's just keep reading. And Jesus said, can you drink the cup of suffering? Everybody say the cup of suffering. Yeah. See, because all of you here have to drink the cup of suffering. The question is, what cup are you drinking from? What's your cup? My cup is pastoring a church. And it comes with a lot of betrayal, <laughs> abandonment, rejection, Criticism, judgment, pedestalism, <laughs> that's even a word. <laughs> I'm always being put on a pedestal. False expectations. See, that's my cup of suffering. So when people tell me I want to pastor my own church. <laughs> For real? Are you sure? Because I heard I want. I didn't hear I'm called. A lot of you want to start a business. A lot of you want to be married. A lot of you want. 
but are you called to do it? That's what he's saying. You don't understand what I'm called to and what you're asking for. You see, you want to skip the process and go right at my right hand, and you want to go at my left hand and not understand that there's a cup of suffering that you can't handle to get to the place of God's upgrade for my life. You also have an upgrade, but it looks nothing like mine. Now, let's keep reading quickly, and let's get out of here. I got no minutes left. Let's go. Or can you go through the baptism of suffering I must go through? They said, we can. We can do it. Si se puede. <laughs> Gloria a Dios. That's that faith talking, that, that fake, or is it fake or faith? That's that fake talking, right? Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, but you don't understand the process. See, faith always comes with a process, whether you like it or not. It says you always have to count the cost, whether or not you have enough faith to get to that place. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and so they said, yeah, we can. And look what Jesus says. Now, I love Jesus because he doesn't burst their bubble like, no, you can't. What's wrong with you? Are you crazy? He didn't say that to them. But look, they said, answered yes. And Jesus said to them, well, you know what? Yeah, you will drink from the cup I, 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 I drink from. In other words, you're going to benefit from what I'm going to suffer. You will drink from the cup I drink, and you will go through the baptism I go through. But <laughs> it is not for me to say who will sit at my right hand or who's going to sit at my left hand. These places belong to those they are. I'm sorry. They're, they're for who? They're for. You want this, but are you prepared? You, God, God is preparing you, therefore, he's preparing you. The preparation comes with a cup of suffering. So for those of you right now that are drinking your cup of suffering, it's for the purpose of preparing you for where God wants to upgrade you. Can you just give me a few more minutes? Hmm. You, can't, you can't skip a level. You can't skip a world. You can't skip a process. And I know there are people sitting in here, you're, you're still in that same boat. You're still in that same attitude. Uh, you're still probably dealing with that same pride and, and you have to ask God, upgrade my heart. Because it's hard for me to receive that I've come this far only to go back. See, because that's disappointment when you have to go back. See, when you have to go back and have to address the process, that is interpreted to you and I as delayed. Now we're going to be delayed. Now we're going to have to wait. You see, we, we pray, when we pray, we're praying as if God is our microwave God. But when God gives you a plan, a purpose, a vision, it's not a microwave vision. It's not a microwave purpose. It's a cro crock pot purpose, vision. In other words, God has thought about you so much that he knows you by name and he knows the number of hairs on your head. He is so detailed about everything of you. He loves you so much that he thinks about every single turn. Up, up, your down, downs, your left, rights, left, rights, your selects, your decisions, to start. God knows. I mean, who wants a microwave vision? That'll be like that. A crock pot? It's got to catch up and warm up. Then it's got to sizzle a little bit. Then all the juices have to begin to just 
separate and then come back together and then the boiling process. But man, when you eat it, it's so good. I'm praying for God to really help us to understand that our suffering, our setbacks, our delays, our disappointment, God has prepared us for this. And, and please, don't get it twisted. There are going to be people who are going to look at you and say, I don't understand that. I can't understand how you can keep praying to God, going to church, and and doing what you're doing, serving in church, giving in church, uh, loving people, serving. I can't believe you're doing all that and you're wasting your life while you're missing out on everything that you should be doing in this world. You see, that's a microwave. God wants to put you through the process. And it hurts, but God is preparing your identity during this process as well, guys. He's preparing your identity in the process. God is establishing these days when you're challenged, when you feel forgotten. God is, God is allowing us to establish our, our character when we're betrayed, when we're talked about. And you have to remember that my season, my current season does not determine my identification. Come on, your current vocation or even your location does not determine my identification. Just like this stage, this stage is not who I am. I am a child of God. Amen. I, I, my identity is in my Father, the one who values me. What I do for a living doesn't give me worth or value. My Heavenly Father values me and He thinks I'm worth it. Amen. That's what He thinks about you. But we identify so much by what we do or what we have. And in the midst of, of, of when you lose things, then you find out that, man, all this time, my whole identity, my whole purpose of living was in that, in that career, in that platform, in that singing gift, in that talent, in that whatever. And then you come to a place where you're just lost. Why? Because you never learned to identify with Jesus. Hmm. Say it with me. My season doesn't define me. And it doesn't determine my identification. Ah, I'm going to skip. Ah, no, I won't skip. We're doing good. 8.15. Look at this. I love this. Acts chapter 9, verse 10 through 16. It says, in Damascus there was a believer named Ananias. And the Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias. He said, yes, Lord. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Look how, look how detailed God is on Straight Street. In other words, he, he was going to get someone straight. Oh, some of us are going to get straight tonight. Go on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, which was Paul. He is praying. In a vision, Saul has seen me. A man come, place his hands on him, or he has seen that a man has come and placed his hands on him, and that man's name is Ananias. In the vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. And Lord, he said, uh, this is Ananias saying, Lord, I, I, I've, I've heard many reports about this dude you're sending me to. Like, like Ananias is correcting God, like, dude, are you sure you got the right guy? <laughs> like, you know who this joker is, man? It, it, like, like so many of us, God puts a, a, a mantle on you, a call on you, and you even question whether or not you're even the right one that's qualified. And so this guy's trying to even see if the man's qualified, if Saul is even qualified to even get hands laid on. And look what it says, and I want, I want you to get this. I've heard about all the things and reports of this man, and they say he has done great harm to your holy people in Jerusalem. Now he has come here to arrest all those who worship you. The chief priests have given him authority to do this. But the Lord said to Ananias, go! 
so many of us want to come up, well, you know, it's because I'm just not educated, and, you know, and you know where I come from. I come from the hood, and, well, you know, my auntie was a drunk, my daddy was a drunk, my grandma was a drunk, so I'm a drunk. No. He's like, no, go. We, we, God, God's saying, stop identifying with even your location. Some of you, your vocation is not the greatest. You know, you're probably embarrassed to even say what you do for a living. But let me tell you something. God's not embarrassed by you. That's a part of the process that's preparing you for the very thing that God is, 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 is preparing for you. Uh, I was a janitor before I ever went into full-time ministry. How about that? Huh? Cleaning the bathrooms in the, in the church while God was preparing the character within me. Huh? Vacuuming carpets. Huh? Sitting at table as a little boy not eating anything but later years later starting a church and we're feeding tens of thousands of people living in under abuse rescuing children who have been abused do you understand that everything you've been through is not wasteful to God it's useful in the hand of the father stop being so angry with your season your season is preparing you for your next level and so he says, but the Lord said, Ananias, go, I have chosen this man. I have chosen that woman. I have chosen that person that everyone's overlooked. I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must I pray God showed you tonight how much you must suffer so that you look at your current status and say, I embrace it, God. Okay. It's okay that I'm in a dark place. It's okay. Because God shines his light in the darkest places. That's where God shines. He doesn't shine on light. He shines on darkness. You don't go out in the daytime with a flashlight. You go out with a flashlight in the dark time. The Father is shedding his light on you. Verse 23. And then after many days, the Jews had a meeting. And they planned to kill Saul. <laughs> How about that? The moment he started. See, you don't know who you're sitting by right now. That God is preparing for something amazing. And obviously maybe you don't even know what you're sitting on. That God is preparing you for something amazing. You're sitting on God's word. You're sitting on God's promise. And we know that Paul, who was shown all his sufferings, ends up writing 13 books of the New Testament. 13 books of the New Testament. And you know where most of his books were written? In prison. Suffering. But how many know that right now, man, he is stand, standing in glory with God, amen? Everybody likes to put their good reel out. All the good life. But in the Bible... God shows you the real life and says, look what my sons have suffered, but look at the glory. Look what you benefit from this. Huh? Paul learned this, and in Romans chapter 5, last verse, and let's go home. Look what he said. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that our suffering produces what? And perseverance what? And character what? How about that? Stand to your feet. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.